Welcome back to the next episode of interviews. How does it feel to be a classical female musician? Where we talk about careers, challenges of being a woman in classical music business and general gender inequality in this industry. It is a series of interviews with prominent female musicians. You can find out more about the project in the first video, which link you can find in the description below. I'm very happy to introduce you my today co-speaker, Saskia Wor, a versatile musician from Germany. Hello, Saskia. Hello, thank you for having me. <laughs> you are a flutist, flute and piano teacher, coach, arranger, composer and author. With so many occupations, tell me what is your biggest passion? Yeah, I have to uh, think about this. I, I must say it's my first interview in English. <laughs> when I say something something wrong, don't catch me. Um, my, no problem. <laughs> my, my big passion is um, inspiring people. And uh, the good news for me is then in, in all these activities, I can inspire people. <laughs> when I go on stage, I can um, inspire people with my music. When I teach, I can inspire and motivate my students and when I write my book or my blog I can inspire people and um, it's a very nice job activities I have <laughs> to do this then um, I think so many people um, in our music world don't speak about um, inspiration or creativity that's um, more about work and practice and hard work and hard practice and I think um, I want to go in the other side <laughs> to go <laughs> more inspiring people and um, live my live my dream life as a musician and not um, who say to me you must practice all day eight hours a day it's <laughs> nobody can do this I, I must say this <laughs> yeah it's That's also true. scientific showed that yeah. we are not able to practice no. so much concentrate yeah. so yeah. whoever say he's practicing 12 hours per day I'm like <laughs> um, but I totally agree with you music is so much more than just practice and sit in the music room there is one very famous cello teacher who always said um, chair music stand and a room yeah. that's all you need in your life yeah ah. and I, ne <laughs> I never felt home I, I love making music I love being on the stage and showing the people a story which I can tell through through the cello but I totally want to have a normal life I have friends yeah. um to do other things and not just practice because I feel like in a cage if I just practice all the time. And I think it's so important that we have people, especially teachers, yeah. who show us that it's not all about practice. Of course, without practicing, we can be a good musician. Yes. That's one point one. <laughs> yeah. um, but also there's so many other things which we need to be aware of as for example, that we need to do sport to be fit um, and to be able to make music. So I'm really happy that we have uh, young teachers like you and coach, yeah. because before I would say 20 years ago, it was almost impossible to find a coach for musicians or something like that. Um, so I think we are really going to the good direction, but I hope that all those things will come also to the I mean, with you are coming to the music schools, but also yeah. in general that we will be able to hear more about it during our education and not after when we will have problems and we'll be like, oh, help me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, my mentor said to me uh, years ago, um, music is life and we uh, must live a life <laughs> when we do music on the stage. That means uh, you can practice, okay, yeah. It's, it's nice, but when you want to talk about something, about emotions, about experience on a stage, 
you you must to have experience and emotion and you can't uh, exactly come this in the in the practice room yeah i i have so many practice sessions in my life uh, since my 12th uh, 13th year but um when i talk on a stage with my instruments i talk about um about love about um angriness <laughs> about, about um, emotions and that's that's um some some point i think the the teachers in the music schools for for professional musicians um it's it's a little bit too focused on technique and um stage performance it's it's important but when you don't have to talk about anything why yeah. would i hear you when you talk about the scales you practice all day it's not interesting <laughs> for me in this yeah. <laughs> audition yeah <laughs> exactly and even i would say the thing which bothered me more is that when there is a teacher who wants to do different and who yeah. really have so much ideas so much knowledge from different sides yeah. then other teachers are like what are you doing like yeah. we don't do like that or it's like you don't get the job you have a crazy ideas yeah and i'm like okay we are in 21st century it's not <laughs> anymore the same as 50 years ago like like let's be honest like 70 years ago yeah. women couldn't be in the orchestra or something like that some yeah. like we can't teach the same way if the life is not the same like 70 years ago it was impossible to travel like today or have, have internet so we really need to be with a time and yeah. <laughs> i think if young people are aware of that and if we don't maybe sometimes get it from from the teacher it's good to speak so we are aware that we need to find it somewhere else because we have internet we have all the possibilities to find it so we're pretty lucky yes <laughs> um so as a freelance flutist you're specialized in contemporary music and chamber music how was the entrance to the professional world for you as a young and attractive woman yeah it was um interesting <laughs> i was very young i must say i am my my first um concerts as a soloist i was 17 18 uh, 10 years ago oh my god i am old <laughs> that's okay me too um, we're same age i would say okay. and <laughs> um, i was very young and um i'm my studies uh, before my um uh, general studies I was a young student in in Germany and um, I make some um, concerts with chamber music or with uh, with orchestras and I don't understand the sexism in this time I am too young <laughs> to understand I have I have um, I'm, 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 I looked in my um in my pictures uh, there was one concert i was 18 years ago uh, 18 years old and um the the press write about me in german yeah um what beautiful dress i have on in, on on this concert no sentence about my play <laughs> only about how nice i look <laughs> on the stage in in it wasn't um um the internet article it was in the um site in the newspapers yeah newspaper thank you in the, in the newspaper i have this, <laughs> I have this. okay what? i mean i personally don't have nothing against that someone say that you have a nice dress because yeah. i really like nice dresses for the concert yeah but i mean we are there for music and not yeah. like a fashion show so the first thing you speak about is music and then yeah. And I think, Everything else. I think in, in, in this time, I don't understand it, but um, I think a male flutist, it wouldn't happen. No, for sure. And this, this art of uh, sexism, this um, 
I think little sexism. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand with 18 years. Um, I, I, I don't understand it. And um, I had some uh, some experience with um, when I come to, with my ensemble, I come to a concert and I'm the boss because I organize all, I communicate, I'm I'm the boss, I'm the top of the ensemble. And then I came to, <laughs> to a concert and um, the guy who took us said to me yeah can i can i talk with your male colleague i think so I, why <laughs> i'm the boss you have uh, you have your emails worth of me not with my colleague yeah but um i i i am it, it i was i was 22 or 23 and i don't understand what happened in this second <laughs> But um, it's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, but it's only five, six years ago. And now it, it wasn't happened to me now. I would say, okay, we go. You can play um, alone. <laughs> I don't play for you. Yeah. But um, in this time, I, I don't understand it. And I say, okay, yeah, then talk to my colleague. I'm, I don't understand the problem. And nobody talk with me about it. No women, no women talk about with me. Now I am the woman who talk about this topic with other women. But now I talk about it. And so many people say to me, yeah, but it's years ago. And now it's it's other um, topics. And I, I think, no, it's not. It's not OK. It's not equal. It's bullshit. I'm sorry. But no, no, no. It's, I mean, but it's just five years ago. And yeah. honestly, <laughs> before before I got this scholarship and before I started to research about all those things, I'm coming from Slovenia and okay. I studied before in Croatia. So they're like, okay. let's say mm -hmm. Balkan countries. I came to Germany with 24 or 23 and I had no idea about those things because I was like, okay, mostly on the solo positions in the orchestra are men because they are better. Yeah. Mostly they are winning competitions because they practice more. Like I didn't <laughs> even think about it, you know, like why? Like the no. world is nice and everything is like it should be. And then I started to read the articles yeah. and speak with people. And I realized, okay, I really need to do some podcasts to show also to my friends in Croatia and Slovenia that it's not everything that they are better. I don't say that they aren't sometimes better. Of course, it's always yeah. like how yeah. it is. But it's just not possible that in the most of the orchestras, mostly men are on the solo positions. And yeah. there are so many women who are amazing. They have everything. They are good. They have competitions. They have good biographies, amazing education. But it's still not enough. Also, in my other interview, my co-speaker told me that she was maybe 20, 22 or something. She won a lot of competition before. So she had a mm -hmm. kind of big career already in this, this time. So she played with big names. And on one festival, someone just asked her if she would come with him to the room. And she kind of ran away. She didn't know what happened. She didn't know how to react because nobody told her that something like that is happening. And of course, there are a lucky person who never experienced something like that. But we still need to show the girls that it's happening and that we need to know how to react because you said that alone already. If it would happen to you now that someone would say like, I want to speak with your male colleague, you would be like, no, you speak or with me or I don't play. Yeah. Come on. So I really think it's very good that we speak about it. Yeah. And I realized with uh, making these interviews that people who have really bad experience, they can't speak about them because they are too hard for them. Um, and of course, they also don't want to say it um, publicly. But there is so many people and so many, many women, actually, who, who think that it's not happening. Yeah. That yeah. In my book, I write uh, two capitals about uh, feminism topics. And one of them is about it's so ah, <laughs> when you go to a concert and after the concert as a woman you play you come down all drink wine and then they come old man and touches you 
it's normal now no but in this time for me it was normal they touch you and lay a hand on your shoulder or on your neck or it it's like <laughs> and i write about it because i had this situation in my life a hundred times and i don't speak up because i learned it's normal it's yeah. okay and now i i understand and i i realize it's not normal of course my, not. my male musician colleagues don't have this problem that um female came to him and, and touch them no that's i would say they would like that but unfortunately it doesn't happen <laughs> we don't know but it's, it's it's a problem and they looked at you as an animal <laughs> it's wow <laughs> and i don't speak about it in this time because i think okay it's only me i don't know and then i write it in my book and then so many women told me Oh God, Saskia, I know what you mean. I had these situations so often. After the stage, you play, and then with the what is publicum? <laughs> audience? Yes. yes, audience, thank you. And then they touches you on the skin, not on your dress, but on your skin. Oh, <laughs> it's normal. And it's okay when you say, no, I want that you go away from me. <laughs> That's okay. You can do this with nice words, but yeah. you, can, you can say no. This information I don't have in this time. You can say no. Yeah, that's the thing. I you were, Now when you told me, I also realized I had so many situations yeah. like that. But I didn't even think about them because yeah. they are nice. They say like you play nice. They just, it's the way how they communicate. But the only thing how we can solve it is to speak about it. Because otherwise we all think, yeah, it's like that. Or yeah. we shouldn't say too much because then we are afraid that we won't get more opportunities they don't come or an something another like one. that. Yeah. Yeah. You think, okay, when I say no, they, the, the next time they don't come to your concert. Exactly. Bullshit. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and let's be honest, if if yeah. they are there just because of that yeah they can they, they can don't go to need another... to be there like <laughs> there can... are so many others concerts yeah i yeah. would say yeah and you can you can say to me that you um love my concert without touching me of course that's okay. and i'm <laughs> And I'm sure then when they come to the shop or something and they are super happy how someone yeah. helped them, they don't touch them neither on the skin and things like that. It's just not okay, especially if you don't know someone. It's no way that it should be okay. Yeah, yeah. nice it's, topic. <laughs> oh, really nice topic, yeah. <laughs> um, let's go to, to the more happy topics. Besides working as a flute and piano teacher in the music school, you're also a docent for Berufsfeldkunde at Academy of Music Berlin and at the International Music Academy Wuppertal. Yes. <laughs> as someone who didn't have a class like that during my education, can you explain to me what are your classes about and how do you help students in their career? Yeah, there are subjects who should teach in all music schools worldwide it's my it's my opinion but <laughs> um now in some music schools in germany they come with this uh, topics um, um money and uh, marketing and uh, gema gvl and this all it, it it's slow but it comes <laughs> and i have a, a lehrauftrag in two academies for this berufsfeldkunde is in english is uh, how can i be a mus musician and live in this and take money ah, okay that's that's the topics okay we we can i do my marketing website social media finance management how i do a good application when when i want to go in an orchestra or in a music school or when I'm freelancer, how I can live as a freelancer, <laughs> that's the topics. And there are many subjects in the case, what's the professional music world? What can you do 
most people think um yeah you can go to orchestra or you can teach but that's uh, only two activities you can do from 100 <laughs> you can produce music you can do in, in studio as a musician you can write or arrange musician you can write books <laughs> okay you can um, do podcasts you can do, do so many things and you can become money from many activities not from only one in covid pandemic we see <laughs> what takes the people's ground when you can't play on stage and they play only on stage and then they can't um, work what we do now <laughs> so i teach in this um, subjects how i can live as a freelance musician But also we can, I work as an orchestra musician, a little bit mental and mindset topics are in there. This all topics, you said you haven't um, a class like that. No, that I had a bit strange face where you spoke yeah. about what are you doing there? Because I was like, whoa, that's exactly everything I don't know about. Yeah. That's exactly the things which I want to know. But Unfortunately, it kind of wasn't possible if you don't pay a loan or something like that. And it's so important. I can just say that I'm really impressed that you're so young and you're doing such amazing things. I think you're really, really very inspiring, young, powerful woman. And I'm really happy that I met you. Um, <laughs> and please continue with this yeah, I do. teaching. <laughs> things because it's amazing and we need more yes. Saskia's in this world yeah. and especially Germany it's kind of the Europe center for yeah. musicians especially for education and later also for orchestra and almost also here is kind of hard to find that already in the music schools I mean you do it but there is a little percent and I also spoke with one very inspiring teacher and here in Germany and she said when you come with a good ideas Hochschulers are normally interested until we don't come to the to the state where they really need to take it they need to pay it and to give it to students yeah. then everything blocks somehow yeah not everywhere but in the most of institutions so first you get a really good feedback and you think okay we will do it we'll do something really good and then you're disappointed at the end because you see it's so hard to fight with the institutions so really amazing job i would like to be a bit younger and in those uh, universities to have these classes really <laughs> it sounds so amazing and so useful for us because when you finish the studies and you go to the professional world you are i would say even more lost than when you started to study because what i teach how to survive in musician world <laughs> that's what i teach how to survive that's the topic. amazing how to survive in this world who oh my god it's so so many problems in this world and i don't think that they go when we don't talk about these problems no for sure it's like um you know lord of the rings mm -hmm. it's like sauron it's like a black <laughs> massive <laughs> atmosphere you can't hope that this go away himself yeah you must fight and i can't fight alone <laughs> because i love so interviews like that or people male or female it doesn't matter we must fight these problems now we can talk about it we can talk about it on youtube on podcasts on social media but this this musician's world is ill yeah and it's like a, a box yeah when you <laughs> yeah. go out of the box you first what you get is judging yeah um of other <laughs> musicians that's the first thing because i know like what are you doing like no you don't do it like that it's <laughs> with everything even with clothes on the concert yeah. why i can't have a yellow dress if i want to have a yellow dress where's the problem i don't get it yeah and if you want to do things and speak 
publicly on the, on uh, social medias or something like that you're like why you do that like and then i mean that's the first impression what i got from people it's yeah. always judging yeah but then when you find a really like really open minded musicians I always feel so inspired and so full of energy after, after like talking with them. And then I see like, okay, anyway, it's true. If you do something good, people will always talk about it, good and bad. And it's yeah. the same. I mean, when you do bad things, they speak just bad. But when you do good, unfortunately, they do both things. And if you don't do anything, they don't speak. And musicians are persons about who needs to be spoken because we live from audience we live from i don't know social medias from students from where whatever we do we do for someone we can't we can't do it for ourselves if we do it for ourselves then it's a hobby and uh, not a profession yes. <laughs> because from <laughs> Yeah. I need to pay my bills and I can't do it from, oh, yeah. thank you very much or something yeah. like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> so we see you're doing so many things now, but already during your studies, you started a podcast, Manage Music, the Musiker Schmeide and Flutenfragen, which links you can find in the description below. I will have them um, in over then 100 episodes of the Manage Music podcast, you speak about different topics connected to self-management in music studies. The other series of podcasts with name the Musiker Schmeide deals with all the topics and skills that musicians have to be able to do nowadays. So time and energy management, communication, booking, internet presence, motivation, goal setting, project planning, actually kind of the things which you are also teaching right yeah yeah um so can you share with us maybe the most important conclusions and discoveries you found out during producing those podcasts and i also want to know if you think that both males and females have the same opportunities to succeed in classical music or you have a feeling that it's harder harder to succeed as a woman um manage music is the name of my blog also and um i blogged and and make podcasts since early 2020 before COVID, <laughs> and i can say with all podcasts i learned so much about me about don't give a shit what people think about me <laughs> because you said earlier it's all people have um, opinion about what you are doing, but I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't give a shit on it. It's okay. You can say, I don't like the podcast of Saskia. Yeah, it's okay. Then you can go. Everybody can say it. it yeah. we, are, we live in a free world, so yes. it's fine to say that. You can go It's so many podcasts there. But when I started it, there aren't any podcasts for music students in Germany. For musicians, there are many podcasts um, to uh, several themes um, and topics. But for music students, I was in this time in my music studies and I think, okay, self-management is a topic who don't talk about, but we need it. We need, we need so time. much. We need time management. It's it's a very, very, very important thing. <laughs> um, and I, I play in orchestras with my student colleagues in the Hochschule Orchestra, yeah, and then they come too late uh, with coffee and croissant too late to the to the rehearsal and i think so when you do this in an orchestra you can do this three times and then you go forever <laughs> so, that's not good okay and then i think okay they aren't uh, practicing this piece for the rehearsal they all said to me yeah it's so i have i have much time <laughs> and I, I say okay but um, it's your job <laughs> to, to do true. this and come when the, the rehearsal begin at 10 o'clock you are 9 45 you are in this room and I don't, I don't think that i must say this but 
you can practice a little bit and then you are uh, relaxed and the rehearsal begin. But nobody talk about it. And then I think in 2020, okay, I do a podcast and then we, we talk about this topic, time management, energy management, how I use calendar. Oh my God, you don't know how many people say oh calendar i don't know i'm i used to i used the phone and and then I, so many experience with people who have two things at the same time how <laughs> how can do this yeah i i'm sorry i have i've forgotten i have practicing and then i must go to the rehearsal I say, yeah but we have a rehearsal ah oh I forgot it. <laughs> so many. You know, I'm doing a coaching sessions with Kristen Peters, actually. Peters, she yeah, gave me your yeah, contact. Yeah. And yes. she's teaching me how to use the calendar because yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> because I was like, my head can manage everything. I have everything wow. in my head and it kind of works, but my head is exploding every yeah. day because you can't managed it and I mean sounds like okay yeah using the calendar it's a very obvious thing you do yeah. um, and of course I wrote in my calendar always my rehearsals and everything but you need to use your calendar for the normal day for practice for everything if you want to be organized when you have a lot of things and I'm kind of born not organized human being with too much things to do yeah. So I'm suffering so much because of it. And now I'm so thankful to have an opportunity to have a coach who teach me. But I, I every time say to her, like, I feel a bit stupid, you know, that I think which I <laughs> no, should know. Like, it's okay. But then I say, okay, yeah. I mean, it's good that I'm aware of the things that I want to learn because there is yeah. so many, when people are 40 or 50, they teach in the university, but they forget to come to the lesson yeah. or they don't yeah. reply to the uh, mails or things like that. So I say, okay, Romana, you're not so bad. You're learning. So the process is important thing. I listened to some parts of your podcast, Musiker Schmeide. I said, when I learned really good German, yes. I will listen all of them because <laughs> now I'm like, hmm, yeah, I understand. And then, yeah. I, then I don't understand the next three minutes, you know, and then I'm like, mm, maybe I need to learn better German and then I can do it. But it's really, really so inspiring that you actually just took the things in your hands and fight to, yeah. to, to change the world, actually. Yeah. I think it's a hard break it, but no, but um, this was happened in Iran now with the uh, female uh, protests and uh, yeah. protests in Iran. Yeah. Um, I think when they win, this protest i think they can <laughs> when they yeah win. i also think it's a breakthrough for all women all over the world because when they can in this in this country <laughs> when they can break through in this country and say we are for our rights and for our gender for our female power we can stand up when they can in iran we can in germany we can in balkan we can in america and we can in the topics of our jobs we can in the music uh, industry say hey i don't give a shit what you think about me <laughs> when they can in iran said <laughs> we can fall. <laughs> For me, it's so inspiring and it's so hard to see this these pictures in Iran. But when I see it, I think we have a close to breakthrough for all women all over the world, in all topics, in all countries. <laughs> I mean, when I see those pictures from, from there, I'm like, wow, we yeah. are in 21st century. Yeah. We speak about gender. Yeah. <laughs> equality and when you ask male population they say we don't need to speak about it it's everything equal and for example today my previous co-speaker told me that when she started to be assistant in Hans Eisler she had a lower payment because yeah. she was a female yeah <laughs> it was less than 20 years ago yeah. And then when you actually start the thing in normal conversation, it's always, no, we are equal. You did your right. And then you just see pictures like that. And you feel like, well, more than half of the world believes that we're equal. Everything is fine. Like, 
I will fight until this is for all women all over the world. I fight now for only German and, and uh, European women for our music industry. I think we we can we can uh, talk in 60 years and we can uh, see what has happened uh, until in, in 60 years but um let's make a deal in 60 years <laughs> if not earlier we make another <laughs> interview and we see what we did what we did yes <laughs> yeah but because we can't do some um can go to iran and protest with them in iran but, but what i can is speak about these topics in Germany with people in my in my classes, with my friends, with my family. And when all women do this, then all we, we speak all about these topics. And in some countries, women can't sing and dance on the street. And a man said to me, well, we have no problem with equality. Yeah, they even can't what? dance like profession. It's yeah. impossible not yeah. just like it's we are so pri privileged here in in germany i know this because um but but it's not it's, it's a, like what about this when we said yeah but in in your opinion that and i say no i'm a woman and i will fight for women <laughs> for all women not only for musicians it's it's a, a some topic with me but yeah it's it's for exactly. all women and 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 i think the most people have a fear about this because the men <laughs> who see this that uh, women came together and fight together let's be honest women can be very scared very oh, yeah. I don't know very gentle and everything but when we come together yeah. when we decide something yeah. when this character comes from inside when you know that you can't lose anything anymore because you're anyway in the shit. So the only thing you can do, you can fight for yourself. Then I think we can do amazing, amazing things. But unfortunately, bad things need to happen that we really come together. Yeah. But yeah. because I have feeling when everything is good in a lot of situations happens that women can be really not nice to another woman. And that's, horrible at least yeah. for me i'm always like it's okay to not like someone it's your opinion you have every right to do it but you still need to be a nice person you don't need to be bad to other people and especially it's happening in the music world a lot actually between women and it's horrible like let's support each other and i mean we are privileged but we can do so many amazing things still and we just need to be together and not fighting against each other because then we we all lose actually at the end nobody wins i would say yeah um actually when we say like to other people we are musicians many times we get the question and what do you actually do for a living um so i was really impressed when I saw that you wrote a book with exactly the same title, just in German. Was machen <laughs> Sie eigentlich beruflich? Yeah. Can you please introduce us the book and what yeah. actually inspired you to write it? Yeah, the book I write it in the COVID pandemic. This book is when some people say this to you, uh, what I do for your living, yeah, but because they don't understand our, our job. And I became this question so many times. And me too. Yeah. All musicians that read this book <laughs> told me that. <laughs> and th then in the <clears throat> COVID pandemic, I think, okay, I think I write a book. I have no idea how I can explain it in one sentence. And then I think I don't must do it in one sentence. I can write a book. And then I write about our um, musician world. I write about some uh, female topics like, uh, how can you do this with your family? I think no man became this uh, question. It's, it's only a question you ask a woman, how she do this with her family. <laughs> yeah. 
and about pricing, about streaming, about uh, orchestra, how many women we have in orchestra. I have many statistics in this book. It's not big. It's what, what like 160 um, pages. But when you read it and you have uh, no idea about the musician world, then you have an idea. That was my inspiration. I think, okay, when you read it, you you sit like, yes, I know this, I know this, I know this. I have one marketing idea, actually. Can you please contact all the big halls in Germany and ask them if they can sell your book there? Because... People who go to the concert need to know that we didn't work the whole day in the office and then at the evening came to the orchestra. Yeah, yeah. And that yeah, is yeah. not our hobby to be there. We yeah. work a lot every day since we were five, six, seven. Yeah. And we don't yeah. deserve that somebody thinks it's our hobby and that we can come and play for free because, come on, we just play a bit and that's it. That's, that's all the topics. And then I have a capital. Are you practicing a lot as a musician? <laughs> and you think... Do you have a question? And how many instruments do you play? No, but <laughs> I have write this book. And during this, I realized, okay, that's too big for one book. <laughs> and then... There will decide, be a second part. Yeah, yeah. Then I decide, okay, why I can split it. And um, this is more all information. And in the second book, I'm writing about um, our concert life, our mucken life. How is it when you come to a business gig and you sit down on the stairs and become some bratwurst and brötchen and the, the guys eat the caviar and lax and you think, what? <laughs> this uh, experience I will write it down because or you come to the wedding which cost like yeah. I don't know 100,000 euros they pay a superstars to sing two songs for I don't know yeah. how many thousands yeah. and then you play a quartet and you get like 150 euros because it's enough for you and at the end the worst thing is yeah. you need to play Pachenbel Oh, Jesus. <laughs> At least for cello, that's, I always say why he hated us so much to write two bars for ages. We yeah. would need to get a double money for this piece, I swear. Cellist would need to get double money because it's so determinating. <laughs> when I play bass flute, I, I know this problem. <laughs> <laughs> so would you say this book is more for non-musicians to understand us or it's common for both. everyone? Both. both. I write it in the first uh, sentences. It's for both. It's for okay. musicians to read it and to laugh. <laughs> and when you become this question, you can say, read this book. Zaskia write all, all the topics. And many people who read it write me, mostly musicians say to me, yes, I give it to my friend, I give it to my mom, I give it to my <laughs> and, and then it spread it. During I writing this book, I'm so sad about what I read in the internet about female musicians. <laughs> that was, was the beginning in this book because I thought that can't be enough talk about <laughs> these topics. And for people who don't understand our musicians world, this is the perfect book. When you hear it and you have a German friend uh, who can read in German. I just have that in my mind. I exactly know some persons which it's I need a, to write. It's a, nice, need to. it's a nice Christmas gift. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I had this in my mind. <laughs> now I feel even more motivated to learn German better. Ah, very good. <laughs> <laughs> I had just in my mind that when I really learn German, then for sure I need to go back to your website and check everything what yeah. you did so I can actually listen and read everything. <laughs> so um, there are also advantages of being a female musician. What do you see as a female special power and how could we use it even more to succeed? Can you tell us about an experience maybe where you felt really grateful to be a woman? Yeah, it's a topic the most women don't think that I say this now, but our superpower is our cycle. And when we live with our cycle and not against it, we are Wonder Woman. Can you um, explain that? Because I have a really hating relationship with my cycle. Okay, so I know. Please I explain it. Okay, <laughs> I explain you. 
I, I know this problem <laughs> in the past. The female power in this is the feminine energy, uh, creative energy. When I have my period, I have ideas in seconds. I, I can't uh, write them down because it's like a, a light to, <laughs> to the universe. And like, you can do this, you can do this, you can do it. Oh, but I, I think I, I hope <laughs> I In my period or first three or four days of my cycle, I am very creative. When we um, read about it, it, it makes sense because our uh, creativity sit in, in our female um, genital D. <laughs> yes, it's, I think we, we understand there's our intuition is in this. And mostly women fight against her own bodies <laughs> in this time because we are like weak or tired and it's hard to work in this time. Don't do it <laughs> when you can, when you can, I can now, but when you can lay down for one or two days and let the magic happens. When you lay down and come to relax, you become so many ideas and so many creative energy is in you. I don't have time the rest of the cycle to do all the things I have an idea in this time. So when I'm more energy like powerful i can do the things but in this time i lay down <laughs> and relax it's only two days in one cycle two days and we said to us you are so weak and you must do or go practice and it's no it's not good it's for our bodies it's not good it's for our head isn't good and when we live with our cycle that magic happens and then when I have my ovulation, I can work 40 hours a day. It's no problem. But when I have my period, I can't. And when some um, male colleagues said to me, oh, have you your period? Are you it's so tired? I say, yes, but I have so many ideas. I can make so much money in my life because these ideas, this was an idea <laughs> when I have my period. <laughs> yeah. And it's like light <laughs> in my life when I do this. But it's so much work with you, with, with your body, with your senses, your, your head calm down. Yeah, you are too small and you are not good enough and all the bullshit when you can catch it out and say, I'm a beautiful, wonderful, powerful woman. I'm not God, I'm a woman. <laughs> and then I think it's the female superpower. but Mostly, the women would say it's a problem in her life. This period. I would be the first one who say that, but now I just <laughs> realized I was impressed with a lot of things you said. But I guess this question was my favorite um, <laughs> because I never thought about it like that. I was always like every month when my periods come, I'm like. Uh, Why well, it's too heavy? It's so hurtful. I yeah. hate it. I always say to my boyfriend, "Can you have a period this month instead of me?" But now I'm sure I will. I will think about it differently, and I will really try to listen more my body and to realize which days are when and checking the ideas and the energy and everything. Because I mean, it's amazing that you know your body and yourself so good that you were able to come to this conclusion and the biggest problem in general not even connected with a gender is that we don't know ourselves enough yeah. and you just showed that one of our biggest disadvantage i mean we think it's a disadvantage you think you it, can yes. <laughs> just transform to the best thing ever it's, it's only a thing in the head. The period and the cycle um, come every month. It will okay. be there anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you don't want it, it comes. <laughs> it's normal. But when you can switch in your head and say, okay, what is good in this? And it's powerful. We can give life with this cycle. And when we understand this, we understand how much energy is in this uh, period because uh, the period is there because there's no baby. 
that's that's is all but the energy we have to do um, some practice or concert um, our body needs to relax and let it go <laughs> yeah and i think the switch in the head for me was my healing with my body with my depression that was a switch in my head to understand that i'm a woman and i like it I don't hate it. I say it like you. Oh, my my period. Why can you kill me? <laughs> I understand it. I have so many women that talk about it like this. I am the first woman in my, <laughs> in my friends. I say, hey, I like it. I lay down. I read a book or I go into nature. It's okay. And then I became so much ideas for things i can the next five years i can do projects with the ideas of one period <laughs> my nose book is, is full of ideas nobody knows what in this uh, huh? <laughs> it's your <laughs> treasure yeah 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 i don't let uh, see anyone in this book <laughs> it's like my magic book and when you switch it in your head your body will grateful for, for this because like a war with our own body it's not good it's not good for the body it's not good for us and come on it's two days it's it's okay <laughs> two days in 28 days we are weak we are tired it's okay two days my god and we talk with us like yeah you might go and <laughs> <laughs> i understand it but now i don't do it i'm healing i'm really inspired by that so I think that's one of the most important sentences, which I hope girls will remember after this interview. I hope because so. I'm really impressed and I believe they will be too. So besides living and understanding the period and the cycle, what would it be your last message to girls? Like you're so creative, so inspiring. You don't have any fear to do whatever you want. You don't care about all the people who say anything because we know when we go out of the comfort zone, we will always do the best things and people will recognize it sooner or later, but it's not our problem anymore. So yeah. what would you say how to, how to fight with the world full of unwritten rules and experiences? expectations and what we should and what we shouldn't and yeah I, I think the key is responsibility the key is responsibility for my life uh, for your life when when you are a young woman I can understand all the sentences that in your head I'm not good enough I'm too small um, I'm too weak that are sentences that don't come from our parents but from the society Maybe from your parents, that's another problem. But um, from the society, we get so many senses in our head. And the moment when you took your responsibility for your own, own life, that's the moment where you don't give a shit on this all senses. Because it's my, it's my goal, it's my life. When I want to do something, then I do it. Yeah, in this time, I wrote this book, so many senses in my head. No, you aren't an author. You can't do this. Nobody wants to read it. I know the senses, but I don't give a shit on it. I know that's not my voice. My voice wouldn't say something like that. <laughs> my voice said to me, go for it. Do it. Remember who you are. That's my voice. The other senses are not my voice. And when we realize that the senses are not our voice <laughs> and we can let it go, then we took responsibility for our life and said, it's my life, it's my goal. You don't live for your parents, you don't live for your friends or for your sister or for your brother. Um, when you are 80 years old and uh, you are close to your dad, Nobody want to hear, ah, oh, I have a very nice life for my parents. No, yeah, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> that's not your self-responsibility. I think that's the key to come in, um, in the power, in the energy. You need to be a creative woman. The key is 
we are all creative women <laughs> not yeah I'm not the only one or I have seen the Hunger Games last days uh, with Jennifer Lawrence and um, I love those films but I have seen it and I think the problem is that we all think there can only one do some things or that there is uh, only one woman this only one is the problem bullshit we can all go in our lights and our power and when we do this magic happens <laughs> and I think responsibility is uh, the point and so many people say yeah but it's your fault it's your fault when I failed it's your fault what the f <laughs> when I fail it's my fault not your fault and you can switch it and say okay when I win uh, audition when I win it's my um, fault again yes it's I'm doing this not you have doing this for me I do this and when we do a good thing we said so stupid things like yeah but it's 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 okay Yona. it's not so good and I think what the f you can do a party when you do something good and say it's my fault I am doing this and then you are in this energy so many men have fear of it this energy is is the point why we would burn some <laughs> women seven yeah, centuries ago <laughs> this exactly energy, this energy is this um when i go in this energy i see it in the in the eyes i love the film Cruella de Vil. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. the fear in this eyes i can love i think <laughs> <laughs> it's not my problem that you have fear of my energy it's it's your problem it's your fault <laughs> so, yeah and, and it just shows so that you're so powerful that they are afraid to fight yeah <laughs> yeah okay. and it's a great thing let's yeah. be honest it's a great thing because also a few years ago or 10 years ago you had this eyes of full of fear in some other situation and now you handled the situations perfectly because you learn. So I think responsibility will take all of us together today. And I expected a lot from this interview, but honestly, not so much as I got. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you a lot. It was really so inspiring. And I'm really happy that I somehow find you um you see that's when women come together i got your contact from another woman and without her i wouldn't find you for sure so yeah it's one more thing how powerful we can be when we just yeah. step together and support each other thank you for having me and um thank you thank you